Hi, welcome to the method for doing the Junior Cert Harmony question. This is the backing chords version of the question, which is question 8C on the Junior Cert paper. The task here is to put in backing chords for a given tune so that it can be accompanied using a harmonic instrument like guitar or piano. The first thing we need to do is the preparation work and first here we need to identify the key and name the sharps or flats of the key signature. It's very important that we do not forget about these sharps or flats at any time during the question. Now the second thing to do then is to build up the chords in the key, chords 1 to 6. The first three are the magic circle chords, which are chords 1, 4 and 5. And these are major chords, but for this question we also need chords 2, 3 and 6. These are minor chords and are denoted with a small Roman numeral and the letter M after the name of the chord, A minor, E minor, etc. Now, um, first of all, let's do this exercise where we put in the correct chord symbol for these chords. This is the chord of A minor, and it would look like capital A with an M. So you do the rest of them. Here's another exercise. In this key of C, chord 3 would be chord built on E and it is a minor chord because it is chord number three so it would be capital E small m. You do these other chords. Now in the key of C to build up the chords one to six we have first of all we don't draw any lines C E G would be the first chord then moving on to the second chord, D, F, A, that's D minor, and it's a minor chord. Third chord is also a minor chord, E, G, B. Fourth chord is F, A, C, one of the magic circle chords. The fifth chord is G, B, D, and the added seventh is F, which is the G7 chord. And finally, A, C, E is the minor chord of A minor. In the key of G, it would look like this. Again, here's our magic circle with the notes written in the circle. Chord 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, do the exercise here where you name the six chords from each of the following keys. Don't forget the key signature, and don't forget to put in the small m for minor chords. Now, our chord choices, we need to work out all the possible chords for each chord box. And this is done by taking account of every note in the tune between the chord box and the next one. The notes in the tune will be harmony notes or added notes. The trick is to decide which is which. Check out the example on the next screen. So. Here we have an example in the key of D, just like you would find in the Junior Cert question. A number of the chords have been done to start with, but there are nine empty boxes, each of which gets five marks. In the key of D, these are the chords. D for number one, E minor, F sharp minor, G, A with the optional seventh, and B minor. In the triads question, we know that a chord will harmonize music notes in a bar if the notes are in the chord. The first five chords are given. There are three choices to harmonize the Ds in bar one, D, B minor and G, and D was chosen. In the second chord box, there are two choices to harmonize both the C sharp and A notes. These are A major and F sharp minor. A was chosen. In the third chord box, the note B is harmonizable by three chords, E minor, G and B minor, and G was chosen, and so on. Our job is to work out all the choices for the other boxes. In bar 5, all the notes under the box can't fit in the one chord. 
Here you find that the most notes possible, which would be D, F sharp and D, that would fit in the one chord. The chord choices for these notes would be D and B minor, and in each case the E would be a passing note. So we write the two choices, D and B minor, above the box. Another important point in bar 6, the first box has two notes underneath it. The two notes are of the same value, but they can't fit in the one chord. So we pick the note under the chord box as being the main note, and if there are any other notes um, that go with it, so be it, but here it's the G. So the choices for G would be the chord of G or the chord of E minor. Likewise, in the second half of the bar, we have, similar to bar 5, uh, three notes, two of which fit in the one chord, but the C-sharp would be a passing note, so the B and the D will be harmonized by either B minor or G. Now, if we carry on and look at all the possible choices uh, in our example, Here we have all our chord choices for this piece of music. There are a number of interesting points to take note of, apart from bars 5 and bars 6 that we already commented on. If we look at bar 4, we see that the two boxes have the same choices above them. This is because the first chord box has two notes underneath it, both the same value, uh, but don't both fit in the one chord. So we pick the E as being the important note, and the D then is a lower auxiliary note. The choices for harmonizing E are A and D minor. So likewise, the minimi at the end of the bar is also harmonizable by A and D minor. How to make the choice here, we will look at later. If you look in bar seven, the first chord box in bar seven has three notes underneath it, all of which belong in just one chord. And so that chord choice of D would automatically go into the box. Now, deciding on the chords, if there's only one chord, as there was at the beginning of R7, you pick it and put it in. If there are two choices, in general, pick the major chord over the minor chord. However, you are instructed that you cannot use the same chord twice in adjacent boxes, so we will have to look at both bars 4 and bar 6. If the same two choices occur in adjacent boxes, normally you would pick the major chord first and the minor chord in the next box. This will not work in bar 4 though. If there are three choices, eliminate the minor chord and pick the stronger of the remaining chords. For example, in bar 8, we will discuss that as well. Now here we have bars 7 and 8, and the choices are D, which will automatically go into the box, A and D minor for the second last box, and D, B minor and G for the last box. In bar 8, eliminate B minor, because it's minor. That leaves us with D and G. D is stronger, and the reason it's stronger is because of the chord guide. Chord 1 is stronger than chord 4. The chord guide explains this. Here is the chord guide, and we see that chord 1 is on the left, followed by chord 5, then 2 over 4, then 6, then 3. The chord guide shows us which chords work well together in a key. Chord 1 can go to any chord because it is the strongest and it is over on the left. Chord 3, over on the right, is the weakest chord. The strongest chord progressions are to one of the chords next to where you are. Movement to the next chord but one is also a strong progression. At the ends of phrases, we should have cadences. They're the two bars, the two chord boxes, that happen at the end of the four-bar phrase. 
So we will have a cadence in bar 4 and a cadence in bar 8. We need to make sure that the chords we pick at the ends of phrases make cadences. So this is where we will make our decisions in bar 4 and bar 8. The most important cadence is the perfect cadence. It's found at the end of the piece and it can also be found at other phrase endings during the piece. The numbers are 5 to 1. The imperfect cadence is the next most common cadence. It's never found at the end but often at other phrase endings during the piece. There are four different versions. They all end with chord 5. 1 to 5, 2 to 5, 4 to 5 and 6 to 5. These will be the one of these cadences we will use in bar 4. The plagal cadence can also be found at the end of the piece and sometimes at other points in the piece. Its numbers are 4-1. It's not used as often. And finally, the interrupted cadence is never found at the end but can be found at other points during the piece. Its numbers are 5-6. If we go back to our example now, we can see that in bar 4 we have two choices, A and E minor. We can also see that in other places we have two choices and we can pick the major over the minor, as this shows. So in each of these cases we will pick the major chord over the minor chord. The second point is that we can't use the G chord twice in succession down here in bar 6. So if we use it first in the uh, beginning of the bar, then we will use B minor in the other one. Next, we need to have an imperfect cadence in bar 4. So that means we won't use the A chord first and the E minor chord second because that wouldn't make an imperfect cadence. However, the other way around, it does. And finally, we need to have a perfect cadence at the end. So we will use A, which is chord 5, and we'll use D, which is chord 1.